what's up guys welcome back to maestro vapes today we're looking at the copper panzer mod oh yeah it's uh it's super nice i'm really digging this i did a video about a week ago where uh i did a first impressions video and kind of gave you an idea of what it's like and for the last week or so i've been hammering this thing out i've been putting builds that are around 0.1 ohm some that are like 0.1 0.09 0.06 ohm builds and just been trying to hammer this thing out to see if it can keep up with those builds and it's been doing really really well um for voltage drop i thought this one would take a bit of a dump because it has five sections to it has three body sections and then the top and bottom caps but that doesn't seem to be the case on this guy typically if you have like one tube section top and bottom caps it's gonna hit really well there's not too much for that current to run through and bounce from one to the other to the other but this one you can't really tell it's hitting super well um, there are different variations of this clone um, someone said that they're you know copper plated they're not full copper they're you know copper plated brass or copper plated steel I forget what it is this one happens to be full copper. I believe this is the vape tech version of it, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, I drilled the vent holes a little bit bigger, and it is copper in there. It's copper through and through. I've scratched it. I've dinged it. I've dented it. It is copper. It acts like copper. I dropped the uh, bottom firing cap where the where the uh, lock ring is and it's really thin there and it bent up like copper does had to bend it back kind of sucked but it does hit well um, I'm gonna weigh this guy I'm gonna do the voltage drop tests I'm gonna ferret against the stainless steel Panzer with a Nautilus uh, tank on there just to see how they hit and then we're gonna go super sub ohm um, and test it against the copper Nemi and the copper stingray clone this one is just my patina version um and they all hit really really well um so we'll see how that goes i gotta say i really like it i really dig it i've got the uh copper toe baddy on here with the uh two puffs muffler drip tip and it looks fresh prince of bel-air like it is pretty fruish looking um it's heavy you know like if you're gonna carry this thing around in a pair of basketball shorts in your pocket it's probably gonna pull those shorts off of your ass it is heavy all right so let's take it in have a look at it and see what it's all about um it's a panzer it's a panzer clone that's what it is the material is just copper so the voltage drop is going to be slightly less on this one um, if you take it apart, it's going to look like every other Panzer. Although, I have noticed when you compare it to the stainless version, the stainless is a little bit cleaner looking. The machining is a little bit nicer through and through. The grooves and cutouts on everything with the uh, stainless is looking a little bit more sharp and crisp. Um, and that just might have to do with the material. Copper is really soft and it's probably more difficult to machine all right um weight at first i thought that the stainless would weigh much more than the copper but let's take a look at the difference all right put that bad boy on stainless no battery and it's coming in at 183.9 on the richter um, let me take this guy apart over here. Battery is out of it. And it's overloaded on this scale. Um, so 128.6, 77.1. I did this before and it came out to 204. 0.8 grams compared to the 183.2 so the copper is actually 21.6 grams heavier than the stainless it is a heavy mod to carry around with you uh, keep that in mind taking it apart it's all it's the same it's the same as a stainless it's got all your tube sections it is full copper on this version 
and it's sticky. Copper likes to stick together. The threading on it is nice. It's decent. Your pins are full copper. Your tube sections, full copper. I've actually drilled out these vent holes just a little bit bigger to make sure that it was copper throughout and it's not just plated and it is full copper on this. I've also, I've also scuffed this up a little bit and dinged it and on the scuffs and dings it is definitely full copper through and through. All right, switch, same as any other Panzer. Bottom button, same as any other Panzer. That's pretty much it. Let's, uh, let's do a voltage test against some other copper mods and the stainless Panzer and see where they hit, all right? All right, voltage testing here. I've got a fresh Sony VTC4 inline voltmeter. Let's try the stainless Panzer out first. Battery goes in. If you remember from my other video, I had some issues with this arcing and uh, murdering my batteries pretty quick. Might need to adjust a little bit. I guess I don't really need to adjust. I'm not using this for the whole day, but it helps me. Peace of mind. All right. So put the voltmeter on. What I'm going to be using is the same thing I've been using in all my videos just to keep everything the same on these tests. An Aspire Nautilus tank with a 1.6 ohm coil on it. I guess it's 1.6 ohm dual coil. Let's fire up. Oh, backwards. This one's kind of all over the place. But it hits around the 3.9's high. Let me just double check this battery here. The battery's hitting 416, 415. I think the reason why it jumps all over is because there is some arc arcing issues on this stainless. Let's go to the copper. Copper Panzer. The copper Panzer. A little bit of battery rattle. You can get rid of that by just twisting that screw a bit. Like all other copper pan or all, all copper panzers. This one has issues. Well, it doesn't have issues, but when you do do that pin for your battery rattle, it does have to be pretty much all the way out. 416. I'm right-handed, and I'm trying to point this towards you, so I have to keep moving this around. Wow. Wow. Make sure everything's snug on there. Wow. I see it hitting around 4.1. That is badass. This thing has been hitting super hard. Let's do this on a copper nemesis and see where that where that one goes to. All right, voltage test. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put it under a 0.09 ohm load, very low load. Um, I believe the coil on this is a 20 gauge parallel. Let's test her out. Um, we'll do copper Panzer first. We've got a fresh Sony VTC4. Put this thing together. Voltmeter goes on. I'm right-handed, so I'm probably going to have to keep turning this around. You'll see what I'm talking about. Put the Stellar on here. Well, I'll give it a hit first. Show you what the battery's hitting at. 4.15. See where it hits under load here. Around 3.5 it looks like, okay? Now, let's go to the uh, Copper Nemesis and see how that guy hits. Bam. 
Nemi, my old friend. I'm not going to show you what the battery's at right now. It's going to be about the same, all right? It's going to be hitting around 4.15 still. Okay. Snug that right up. Where are we going? Where are we going? 351. It's looking like it's hitting about the same. Around 35-ish. All right, we'll do one more. We'll do the uh, Copper Stingray and see how that bad boy hits. Oh, I won't even put that together. So Copper Stingray, this one is uh, Force Patinaed. That's why it's looking all funky and green carbally. Carbally? Green carbally? Green, <laughs> green marbly? Yeah, I think that's what it is. All right, make sure that's in there. Make all the necessary connections. Let's see how she goes. Well, oh, get that lock ring up. Three, four, seven. Three, four, six-ish. So the copper Panzer hits extremely well. Hits about as good as the copper Nemi on low resistance builds. Super nice. I was uh, a little bit shocked by that. I thought that because it's not a single piece of copper with a top and bottom cap, that there would be some more voltage drop on this test under load. Um, there is like five pieces to this thing, right? So you make those connections, you would think that, you know, your current would have to jump from one to the other, from one to the other, right? But uh, that is not the case with this guy. It hits really well, surprisingly well. Um, the Copper Panzer, it's hitting real nice. Um, I dig this thing. It hits super well. Um, I like the way it looks. I like the way the Panzer looks in general. Like the stainless version looks really, really cool. Like I said earlier, the machining on the stainless is a little bit nicer than the machining on the copper. It's probably due to the copper just being a softer metal, being a little harder to machine and get really nice looking. Or maybe they just do a shittier job where this one's made. Um, there's a lot of variations of this. A lot of companies are cloning all types of mods. The, the Panzer in particular, it's a popular mod. So there's gonna be a lot of people making clones of it. They're not all the same. Someone commented saying that it's copper plated, uh, it's stainless or brass underneath. This one is full copper and uh, it's nice. It tarnishes, it patinas really easily. When I got this thing out of the box, it was already kind of patinaed and I had to polish it up. If you watch the uh, first impressions video, that's the cleanest you're gonna get it, as clean as I could get it anyway. This one I just kind of wiped off a little bit so it didn't look like a old dirty piece of crap, but it's uh, it's really neat the way that it does patina. In the grooves and in these little machine cutouts everywhere, it gets kind of brown in there, which is super funky looking when you get it patinaing like that. Everywhere else it kind of stays shiny because your hand's in contact with it. Mine gets all these little grooves super brown, and then the top of it, like the top cap and the crown up here, start to kind of brown up a little bit because of the way I hold it and fire it all the time. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. Um, it hits really well. As you saw in the uh, voltage drop test, it hits surprisingly well. I was having some problems with my inline voltmeter there, but uh, you get the gist of it for sure. Um, hopefully I edited this up nice enough that it wasn't too big a problem on the video itself. Um, it looks good. Looks good. Hits well. It's heavy. It's really heavy. Like if you're carrying this thing around, you're wearing like basketball shorts or something, you put this in the pocket, it's going to start pulling those shorts off of your ass. It's definite. It's really heavy. It's heavier than the stainless version of it. It actually overloads my scale, um, which only goes to like you know 200 or 300 grams whatever it is i guess you saw it before in there it's nice if you want one pick one up i got mine from canvape.com 
I think it's around 45 bucks there. Uh, it's a reasonable price for this clone. Uh, I'm not sure who makes it. I think it's the vape tech version, um, but you know, I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that one. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, guys. I want to thank all of the guys who've been subscribing, all the gals who have been subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. All the people for liking and commenting. It's awesome. I do this for you guys, and uh, I'm glad that it's helping out. All right? Maestro Vapes, like I always say, guys, butt out, vape up, and breathe easy. Know your limits and vape within it, and you are going to have a stellar day, my friends. Catch you on the next one.